Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. Now, New York Times reporter Chris Buckley last week was forced to leave the country after his journalist visa renewal did not come through. Now, that makes him the second New York Times reporter who's waiting in Hong Kong for a visa. The New York Times Beijing bureau chief, Philip Pan, has been waiting for his visa there since March. Now, Chris Buckley's visa situation made big news across Western media stationed in China. A lot of people have connected it with the New York Times reporting on Premier Wen Jiabao and his family's wealth. But is this a case? of visa retaliation, or is there something else going on? Here today to talk about this issue, we have China analysts Jason Ma and Chen Zhifei. So, you know, when the foreign media are talking about this and they're kind of connecting it to uh, New York Times' recent reporting on China, do you think that's uh, the reason behind this? No, I don't think so. First of all, the, the, the person who really wrote the article about revealing, revealing Wen's uh, family wealth, uh, his visa was renewed without any problem. And the second, uh, uh, Philip Pence uh, kind of visa was kind of rejected since last March, which is before the article was released. And uh, also, my understanding is uh, uh, this whole thing. I mean, later on, it's, it's more like the Western media kind of people, journalists, uh, are very, very afraid of this kind of thing because a lot of people, their livelihood is based on they getting get a Chinese visa so that they can work in China. And uh, this is always a kind of a, a, a kind of a very sensitive issue. Like uh, they think China is a whole unit. Uh, whenever you write anything wrong with them, they will retaliate and then get back to you. So they created this fear among themselves. I don't, but I don't think this is uh, the reason. So if it's not a case of retaliation, what the foreign ministry has said is that you know it was because Chris Buckley used to work for Reuters and he never turned in his press card for Reuters. So it was kind of Reuters' fault for you know not kind of. Uh, formally saying that he was no longer their journalist, so that's why you know China couldn't re uh, give him a new visa. So is that you know a likely cause of it? Uh, remember that right now the government regime in China is still in a transitional period, and the new leadership under President Xi is trying to create a new environment that probably would. Uh, help them avoid a similar fallout that happened with Bushy Lai's case. Remember, recall what happened with Bushy Lai. Uh, the, uh, what we saw, at least on my part, is a lot of the news uh, information about Bushy Lai's case was first reviewed by none other than Chinese uh, by uh, foreign media. We're looking at the Wall Street Journal articles, New York uh, Times articles, that were the first in reporting uh, the uh, the crime cases against Bushy Lai and his wife. So. Uh, the, the regime, the authority, probably have learned something, one or two things from that event, and now they're trying to tighten up. And uh, I agree with uh, Jason that none of these two people have any direct connection with the revelation of, pre uh, of uh, Premier Wen Jiabao's uh, riches and the family connections. So uh, that's really making it all the more interesting. So you're saying that they are kind of being made an example of, in essence, but it doesn't have something to do with the uh, the Wen Jiabao story. Right, right. Together. I don't think Wen Jiabao story is something we really want to crack down. I mean, it's just like uh, probably New York Times wants people look at them like a hero. They 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 they, they push that direction. But uh, for me, I'm more looking at this kind of two, Philip Pan and uh, Chris Buckley. And I, my understanding is they are two really, really good uh, uh, reporters and they really can go to the details to ask the essence of the kind of the, the, the issue. And uh, so this is the kind of the person they don't like to so be So you're saying it's China. the reporters, not so much the no. media. Right, right, right. It's more about the reporter, reporting themselves. Uh, and um, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the West media begin to play more and more role in Chinese uh, uh, kind of uh, information system because uh, of the internet. Uh, the Western reporting will quickly get into China. So the Chinese regime have a tight control of all the Chinese media. Uh, but right now with all this kind of uh, uh, report about China, the interest about China in the Western media, they feel they need to control more tightly about the Western media. And the way they control it, uh, they can't just kind of reject all the kind of, kind of uh, visas. They pick those people who are very, very strong in Chinese issues. They really know Chinese. So they are not reporting the superficial thing. They are not asking the superficial question in the news uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, press uh, conference. I mean, so, so they target those people to set up example, like uh, uh, either you send, kind of ask all those kind of uh, news agents, like uh, you send some dumb people here, or you should behave yourself, something like that. I think they're trying to achieve ends uh, both uh, for domestic uh, people and also for foreign media core. Because if you look at 
uh, the domestic media market, uh, they're trying to, like I said, uh, to uh, crack down on those people who have been very active providing news sources to Western media. Remember a couple of years ago, a, a New York Times, again, New York Times uh, reporter, uh, loosely uh, affiliated with New York Times, named Zhao Yan, Chinese national, was arrested and was punished for several years imprisonment only because he tipped the New York Times for certain news event. And however, if you use that as kind of a yardstick, I don't know how many people would have been thrown into jail because of Bush Light's case. Because if you look at those bureau chiefs uh, for major news outlets in America, they got all kinds of new uh, scoops uh, about a Bush Light case. And uh, if the government really want to crack down, they could get a lot of people running it up. So I was wondering what had happened with the authority. The, why they have been turning a blind eye to this very active kind of involvement of media in a Chinese system. That's one thing they want to achieve, that is to crack down on that, to stop people from providing news to foreign media. On the other side, they also want to apply pressure on New York Times, the similar organization that, OK, if you have these people reporting on China, keep a close watch on us, uh, we'll create trouble. We'll keep kick them out. So stop using those people. Stop giving them very important assignments. So but but uh, one thing I have to kind of clarify is, like uh, you said, uh, during the Bush Lights uh, incidents, a lot of uh, um, so-called kind of secret was released to the Western media. And so the, the first kind of a revolution, a lot, of, a lot of things was done by Western media. I consider this is a strategy of this uh, uh, power struggle inside the Chinese leadership because. Uh, they know they can't really release those things locally to the local kind of a domestic media because they kind of they are tightly controlled and uh, then somewhat kind of they probably dare not report it. So they, they on purpose release that uh, to the Western media. So so Western media is already became a part of their strategy for the power struggle, and that's the reason it's tolerated. And but. Uh, Sometimes some kind of reporter, they are so sharp, they, they ask a question where they probably some faction don't really want to ask. For example, uh, the Chris Buckley asked the question to uh, kind of Wen Jiabao at the end of the uh, uh, con press, press conference. conference. And then that, the answer of Wen Jiabao directly lead to the rest of uh, Bo Xilai. And at least that caused a faction of a Chinese leader really hate Chris uh, uh, Buckley. I mean, so, so that probably that's the reason. I mean, you when you ask this kind of very sharp question, cause this uh, direct consequence of uh, a failure, f falling of one faction, you may get kind of uh, retaliation from. So that this, if the power during the power struggle, the factions are using Western media or domestic media right. in that way to leak information. If they're crashing down now, does that mean that's not going to be tolerated anymore? That power struggle's over. You know, there's not going to be any more leaks. You can see that as a kind of a truce or a kind of a general statement of the higher authority, the ultimate authority of the regime that says, okay, all party quits the job of co-opting Western media to convey their message. You can really interpret it that way. Um, I, but for me, I'm more kind of consider this as, as a way kind of. Uh, just kind of give some warning of yeah. act out of one faction, of, because we know right now uh, uh, Liu Yunshan, he was in charge of this propaganda kind of bureau, and now he's a part of the standing uh, committee, and he's still very strong about uh, controlling media, and uh, he was considered, he is considered as a, a strong affiliation with the Jiang faction, and I think uh, he may be the person kind of uh, have this kind of uh, um, uh, make this happen so that uh, he want to make people feel like, uh, okay, you should uh, really not go against the Jiang fashion. But if you look at these two people's background, I, I don't think, especially in the case of uh, uh, Philip Penn, he really didn't report that much about the recent power struggle. However, he had a longer history of reporting on what I said, uh, the internal uh, crisis of the Chinese regime, starting with SARS crisis, starting with Chen Guangcheng, uh, those human rights uh, tragedies. So I don't think it's probably one faction of the party. I think it's probably general will or, no, no, I think or uh, kind the, of intention of the party to crack down the Western media. The, the, the most famous thing done by, at least I think, uh, Philip Pan was uh, his uh, revelation of uh, the secret behind the self elimination of Falun Gong practitioner. He, basically, he did a kind of a personal investigation showing like what uh, the Chinese government claims Falun Gong kind of uh, burned himself in Tiananmen Square is indeed not, not, not Falun Gong practitioner. He did that in depth investigation, and I think that made him. Uh, 
considered that as was a, back in two thousand one. Though, but that really hurt the Qiang faction, and uh, so so that make him a f enemy of Qiang faction. So let me ask, you know, if you're saying that the the party is kind of doing this to warn off Western journalists, in effect, does do you think this actually affects how they cover China? Will it affect you know decisions by journalists and China experts if they feel like, okay, I may not get my visa? Because they have to be renewed every year, their journalist fees. So, so this is a huge. I mean, the Chinese government is seeing it, and when with the kind of increasing status of Chinese uh, Chinese economy, Chinese status in U in the world. So, so this became a real threat to all the journalists. But meanwhile, I do think uh, the journalists should kind of uh, do what they should do. Otherwise, they lose their value to be in China. Well, let me ask. The Foreign Correspondents Club of China has done surveys over the last two years about journalists getting visa renewals. And they found 2008, as of May of 2008, almost a third of the people responding said they had problems getting new visas and uh, or getting uh, uh, their renewed visas. And they said even 21 people said they were directly told it was because of their reporting. Mm -hmm. Now, what can media organizations do? Is there anything they can do to kind of uh, you know, like fight back against maybe having their journalist visas taken away for their reporting? It would be very hard for the media organizations to react in that way because there was a little rigor run. If the Chinese government wanted to stop them from their regular operation in China, they could take all the means to achieve that end. I think that's what's happening already. And all they do, I think, uh, is they can publicize these kind of events, just as New York Times is doing. I think that could help their case. But this is a really unbalanced kind of a battlefield. I mean, Chinese have unlimited risk kind of access to the uh, Western world. They can put a TV station, everything they want. But meanwhile, they control everything in China. You can't really put your kind of a TV kind of a channel in Chinese only people's life. Meanwhile, they control everything. They use every way to control the Western journalist. So, so I guess the, the government, U.S. government or Western government, should play some role in this case because I was otherwise. I going to ask that question because Evan Osnos from the New Yorker wrote an article where he said, you know, the State Department should talk about this publicly. Right. But on the other hand, you should see this as a positive sign because there have been reports that there are up to 500 million Chinese people who have ready access to internet. Well, there are also 200 million Chinese who are microbloggers. So the, the, the influence and extent of their effect on Western media is on the rise. That means uh, all these actions taken by the government, Chinese government is is a sign of the insecurity and also the success of Western media. I think they should continue their current path and really go on plodding ahead with the reporting on Chinese in a faithful way. And I think that's really great service to uh, the reform and opening up of the country. Yeah, they should make big deal of all every case that exists. They shouldn't really talk behind the door. I mean, like what uh, the Southern Weekly was doing. I mean, whenever something on kind of justice happened, they should really review it. I mean, I think if you just kind of discuss it behind the curtain, uh, there will be no change, no pressure from the Chinese government part to change. So yeah. if uh, if the kind of news organizations come out more publicly and like talk about when their journalists get their visas denied, things like that, or when the, if the State Department comes out and said, what do you think the effect will be on the Chinese uh, side? I think they view in the future be very careful whenever they do it. They should have a very reasonable kind of explanation behind every this kind of instance. Right now they can just do kind of randomly, they can arbitrarily. So if you keep up the pressure ask a question for everyone, every kind of reject visa, then they may re kind of dramatically reduce this kind of instance from happening. Okay, well, thank you both for joining us today and talking about this issue. And thank you for watching. For more on this and other issues in China, join us at ntd.tv.